Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Siege in 60, the podcast where we always aim to finish in 60 minutes and drastically fail every single time. It's your boys back again, Des, Fresh, and Omerta. And of course, today we are joined by a very special guest, none other than Mr. Prano himself. And this is going to be your little warning that you're about to come on camera as soon as the preview loads up. He is, of course, working with Omerta on Team Secret, so this should be a... A good chat, I think, is a good way of looking at it. How are you doing today, buddy? Oh, uh, doing good. How about you guys? We are all good. I, of course, haven't actually asked Fresh and Omerta yet. How are you boys going? How's your weekend gone so far? Yeah, it's good, all right. Yeah, Sorry, I'm just laughing rough. because rough. Fresh said the comments are just 99% about his hair. Yeah. And so it's it's just immediately comes in Thanks, and mugs him off. Yeah, it's basically got the airbender haircut, mate. I remember was it the demo did the Photoshop of that with the blue arrow. It was melons, yeah. It was melons. Oh, mate, it was golden. Yeah. Look, the more attention you're drawing away from my eyebrows, the better. <laughs> Although, to be fair, you can actually now see eyebrows again. So I can do the whole, like, expression thing. It's great. I'm really enjoying the actual uh, slow restoration of some hair to my face. We're getting there, mate. Get, We're getting there. Can we get a close-up of those eyebrows, does? I don't know if we can. I think I'm already busy. No, I can do a little bit more. It's probably about as close as you can get by the looks of it. You see yeah, anything? I'll just lean in like a sexy cam girl. Uh, there you yeah, go, so mate. Yeah. Just like throw your face in. No, no oh, cleavage, just go. eyebrows this time around. But they are most definitely there. They're on the way, which is uh, always good news. We're getting there. Definitely. We're getting there. Anyway, topics today we wanted to go through is, of course, Soprano One as a special guest is to talk to him a little bit around his experience over the last year, the rise from T3 to T1, Secrets Journey through EU Well, and also from Fresh, we're going to talk a little bit about his experiences with Chaos, of course. Not too long ago, yeah. they announced that they are looking to move their roster on. So it seems like a good time to. Discuss that chapter, have some reflections on that, and go from there. So, we'll kick things off first, Prano. I imagine anyone watching this podcast will... There'll be no one that watches this and doesn't know who you are, but just in case we find some random person out there who suddenly gets an interest in the show, give us a quick 30-second introduction to you, and then maybe go through, again, that past of going from Ghost Killer into Team Secret and now being where you guys currently are. Well, yeah, for anybody who doesn't know me, I'm Prano, as already mentioned. I'm team captain of Team Secrets, playing in EU League at the moment. Thankfully, we avoided relegations after kind of a strong start into Stage 2, where we fought off lately or later down the line, and we didn't win a single match after the first four games. Um, yeah, coming into T1 from Secret was uh, kind of, I don't know, it was kind of surprising because I didn't have like, the best relationships with the guys on the back then Oculus roster. Uh, we had some differences, and I after we had the GSA line, like the first one in Cologne, uh, a few months later, they approached me because their Challenger League season wasn't going that well. So they asked me if I would want to trial for them. After a week of trials, um, they decided to pick me up. So yeah, that's when I joined the team. Of course, after the Challenger League season, Rips and Crime both got picked up. Crime went to G2, uh, Rips went to the No Rogue roster. Um, yeah. That's where we made the roster changes for uh, Expo and Hive, who I played with before on Ghost Killer. We played CL season, we won the CLs, or we didn't win, we were, we were runners-up, so qualified for EU League. We kind of finished, or we played a bad EU League stage one, so we decided to make roster changes. We picked up Shate from Chaos, so Fresh knows a lot about him as well, and we picked up Peckball, who played on Devizen and on the crazy roster before on CL. Um, yeah. We played some better matches uh, in the U League Stage 2. We avoided relegation, as I already said, and now we're here. Awesome. I was going to say, you basically speed ran the whole podcast there, so I think we can start to wrap yeah. things up already, boys, <laughs> five minutes in, the absolute dream. Um, uh, I wanted to make it sure that we fit in the 60 minutes. <laughs> yeah, <there we> go. <laughs> You're really trying to help, but I guarantee there is going to be some hot topic later on that, that ends up... But I think with Jess, like last time we had her on, we were looking to round out in about 75 minutes, and then we got into the new patch and the meta and how teams look at the game, and that turned it into a two-hour podcast. So there's plenty and plenty of room to... Uh, to extend over i've got no doubt i think someone made a comment earlier on as well yeah batman was like a sitting there with a kill button to stop prano speaking at some point today <laughs> how much sweat is currently pouring down your face at the thought of what prano might come out with on this podcast Amurta? uh it's all good is what it is <laughs> i still remember the last episode we were talking around pro workshops and fresh was like oh yeah pro workshops and Amurta was like ah, no 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 <laughs> You need a new button for me, to be honest. <laughs> oh, at some point, I really want like a fresh takes button, though, where you're just like, right, boys, I've got a hot take now. Smash the button, you go full screen, you get to say your piece, and we uh, have a real hot take from someone that ultimately can't really get in trouble anymore. So, uh, I'll we'll you, actually. You can. I've, I've become a bit more mellow in the past few weeks. Which honest. is a shame, because you really have the, br yeah. the bright opportunity to not be mellow here and can be completely yeah, unchained in that, too. 
and well, here we are. Well, you're, uh, you're, you're being nice about the game. It's a very strange thing to see on the timeline, <laughs> that's for sure. He's being nice because he's not playing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, like, honestly, I've got about three hours in Rainbow Six the past two weeks. That's why I'm being nice about it. Oh, mate, I'm pretty sure that qualifies you to be a caster then. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Come join me. After, after your ranked... Uh, your ranked appearance last week, does. Oh, yeah. mate, can we, can we, the can worst. Can we have a quick discussion about uh, yeah, of course, mate. ranked experience over the last It has week. been so a roller coaster, mate. We have yeah, a group the... chat that's basically just me, Jack, and uh, Des. And we were talking a little bit about like playing ranked in the new season. Des played by himself, and he queued and he found these guys. And he was like, <laughs> they're really fun to play with. Love playing with these guys. Like, this is really good. Really enjoying myself. I think it's the first season I'm going to hit plat. So obviously, me and Fresh, we spent the whole time taking the piss out of it as if he's like Actually. some guy who can't play the game. And <laughs> basically, I can just imagine that he's there with these guys who are like, I don't know who they are, but I'm sure that they're like around the same sort of level as Des. They'll be like uh, gold and plat and stuff like that. And I imagine them like playing every game, like the invitational finals. And then it's just like pretty much people just running around gunning them. That's what I imagine it to be like. They're ranked games. I imagine it to be exactly that. I thought you had something else to make as a point to this. I just remember. No, I, just remember, I, I, just remember I just think it's funny because I, Fresh I got Fresh that, got right? well salty at me as well when he's like, "Oh, cheers for the invite," and I was like, "What?" No, no, I think because no, no. I played some games with that in a stack or something. He was like, "Well, cheers for the invite, mate," and I was like, but "What?" Yeah. Do you know like, why I was like with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So I agreed to play with this stack that Des had found. <laughs> These legends. And I'm not even kidding. The first game I dropped like 15 and 4, something like that. It's like, it's the plat level, man. It's not great. And we lose, and I'm just like, all right, this is not going well. Des, Des was telling me how he was like slapping fools the day before. Mate, come on. I had a 1.7 KD prior to that. I was playing really yeah. well. Cheers for that, Des, because the six games I played, you had a 0.1 KD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a tra- I, I was think it wasn't it like five kills across six games I got something ridiculous three, it was a really bad day games, three though. kills there you go it was a terrible and, day and I think the my next day, I'm like Des, Des we can play and you just you just don't invite me and I'm like okay I think mate all I can say is if you're playing on an account where you played with pros before it's probably not an account I should be playing with you on to be completely honest uh... It's what it is, mate. Learn, number. learned my experience. We played great. When, I jumped in the sack with Ace and that, and we had a bit of fun. But we uh, we do digress a little bit here on this one, to be fair. Uh, Prana, the one thing that I need to ask about is, I think if many people were to turn around and say, or ask anyone, you know, who are the best players in EU? Very few, maybe wrongly so, would say Prano. And I think that's quite unfair, as I pointed out to you earlier on. Across the two stages where you can potentially be in the top five spots for any given stat, you are in half of them. Like, you have been top entry, top KD... You've consistently been in the top five for rating, for example, across both stages. You are one of the best players in the region. Why is it you think, or from your perspective at least, there isn't enough focus given to you and your achievements? Well, first of all, like my team didn't perform really well, so my stats True. don't matter that much. So that kind of like pays into that a, a little bit as well. Um, second of all, I'm not as known, so... As Aces Ace says, Prano, Exit Fragger and Crouch Walker, that's why no one says his name, because everyone <laughs> thinks that. Yeah, I, I've heard that a lot. So I, I basically I couldn't care less about what other players say about me, but uh, like I'd rather stay alive for my team and hold the flanks if I have to and be the last life if my team dies, rather than having a teammate who runs in every 20, like every 20 seconds into the round and just dies and has like a 50% chance of having an impact onto the round, so... Yeah, we yeah. had him on in the first week, didn't we? Oh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> See, I was going to make the joke, but you said it, not me. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm aware of what people are saying, like, about my play style and, like, that I'm too passive or whatever. But it's just the way I play and I'm fine with that. And, like, I'm, I've been successful with that play style. And I'm not going to change it because some people just can't, like, sit still for, like, three minutes and just run in and need to have action 30 seconds into the round. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, yeah. that started work out for a few teams, right? I mean, Fresh, you're one person who, again, you, you owned up to this earlier and said it, you know, you haven't said it to anyone else outside of our little group, I guess, me, you and Omerta is like, he's the kind of guy who baits now. his team. I absolutely, mate. <laughs> you know, you, he's the guy who baits his teammates. Like, wh- why do you have that line of thinking? Where does that even come from? And this is a question towards you rather than Prano, obviously. Um, I mean, for me, like, obviously, when we used to watch scrims, that kind of stuff, Um, if you ever get to that kind of, 3v1, 4v1 against Secret, and you know there's one guy left alive, more than likely it's probably going to be Banner. <laughs> um, and that's probably more to do with the playstyle rather than, like, as as the kind of team, I know we spoke about it, Matt, about um, the way you guys 
did set up might not be the case now but like kind of previously um and i think that's kind of where it comes from you know even even like the not kind of um at the end of the round you'll die somewhere you'll be playing villa or whatever and you know prana will kind of just kill somebody from somewhere where you just wouldn't expect to like what the fuck is he doing that <laughs> and I think that's where that kind of perception comes from. And it, I think, I think to be honest, I think the perception is more people like venting that they're they're dying to it and they're pissed off by it rather than the issue of the playstyle. If you know what I mean. I love how uh, Aces is in chat yeah. now, all caps, going mental. I remember Villa Scrim running into basement to flank, and there is Prano sitting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Emma, Emma, do you ever have the instances where you sit there and think, what the fuck is Prano doing there? But he's made it work, so fuck it, right? Or are these things always no, planned in really. the team? So so here's the thing. Like, Prano is, like, very good at his communication, and he's, like, the kind of guy who will always say what he's doing, and he'll also say, like, he'll always check with the people on site, like, if uh, he needs to come back, or he'll say, like, I'm going to play for a pick here, or... Um, this kind of thing, you know, like if he needs to go for a flank, then he will also tell like the his teammates like how long it will take for him to go for this flank and this kind of play, which is like really important. Like this is one thing I think a lot of people who are like roamers in lower tiers just don't do. They play more solo. People like look at Prano's play style and think that he's like a solo player, but in my opinion, he's not. He's a team player. Like he's able to do those kind of things because... Uh, you know, he has the team that kind of like help him do this, like they support him. We give him information and stuff and obviously don't die in the first two seconds unless you're high phase and uh, <laughs> or chate. And, uh, you know, then he comes back and and really like picks it up at the end of the round. Like he's one of our most clutch players, him, him Draven and, and Paco are like our three most clutch players. Now, I'm not going to put you on full blast here, Emerton Exposure, but to give you context, Prano, the couple of times that we've had a conversation around teams and players and stuff, Amerta really kind of hails you as a super professional, you know, really delightful player to work with. He said, you know, we haven't always been like absolute best friends in a team, but we know full well that, you know, between us both, that Prano is one of the best players that we can have in, on a team to play within a team environment. And I suppose outside of being this guy who air quotes, baits his teammates or clicks heads late into the round, what do you think makes you a good player outside of just being able to, you know, be mechanically good at the game? Uh, I'm. I think what makes me a good player is like basically my game sense and my communication. I think that's what sets me apart from other players. Because my mechanical skill wasn't that great. I came to PC like two and a half years ago, and like I have had pre having problems with like aiming or just winning gunfights against the all like mechanically skilled players. Like when you look at Shaiko or like Aces or whatever, they're just clicking heads, and I'm like, how how do they do that? And I'm just looking at like at their senses and whatever and trying to improve on that uh, i've been never that like mechanically gifted player the way i get my kills is like fresh already mentioned as well like i'm i'm in places where people don't expect me to be because i'm thinking about what the like opponents will do and where i can get my easy kills i would say and then i'll i'll try to go there and like try to get the kills there so yeah i think like my game sense my basically my basic understanding of the game and how like certain teams play the game and like what they like to do and remembering what people like certain players like to do and where they like to rotate and stuff and my communication is like that these are my strong suits i'd say fair enough you agree with that Amerta, or do you have a different take on what you think makes him a good player no, I, I fully agree. I think one aspect of Prano that's like super underrated as well is that uh, obviously most people won't be able to see this because they don't play in our team. But when he dies like early in a round, then he is able to like shot call and IGL the rest of the round like really successfully. Most like on defense, if we are like um, playing with like enough information and he is able to like make good calls off that information, then our chance of winning is like really high. He just has high impact. Even if he even if he dies at the start of the round, he's always going to have an impact that won't be shown in the stats. That's what mm. I'm trying to say. Fair enough. I think a really interesting perspective we can get because you're both on the show together here as well is, you know, how how you work together. And this is a side of Siege that obviously for all three of you, you're all completely in tune with. You're like, you've all done it for a long time. You get it. But I think to those that are on the other side of the fence, like the viewer, the fan, even the caster to casters as well to a large extent, you know, what does that coaching relationship look like between you guys? Like, what are the sort of daily communications you have? And obviously you can't go super in-depth here to give away everything the team does. But how would you say you guys function as kind of like a player and coach relationship? And I'll start on your side, Prana, to get your thoughts. Because if you turn around and say it doesn't, it's utter shit. I'm really keen to hear a merch <laughs> justification on the other side of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, here we go. I mean, I think Omera would agree that we haven't always seen like eye to eye. And we had some arguments before on how to do things. 
But in, at the end of the day, I think we both just want the best for the team. And like we can agree on that. So even if I disagree with something that Omero is saying, or Omerta disagrees with something I'm saying, we can talk about it and be open about it and then just move on from that, like find a solution together and agree on something and then just move on. So like personally, I think what a lot of players do wrong is they don't like to listen to their coaches and they don't listen to their coaches. And if they don't agree or disagree, they just shut down completely. That's what I heard from like other teams. Um, me personally, I, I disagree with Omerta a lot. <laughs> like he knows that because I'm very vocal about that too. But like in, at the end of the day, I'm still listening to him and like I'm trying to give him feedback to improve to like what I see. And he's trying to give me feedback on what to improve to be a better player. So, yeah, I think it's it's pretty, pretty like good relationship, open mm. relationship, I would say. Like we, we're pretty honest with each other. Yeah, I'd agree. Oh, yeah. And would you say it's the same across the whole team? And I'm obviously don't expect you to turn around and go, no, nah, you know what? Actually, Chate is an absolute ass to work with. I hate it. But on your side of matter, do you think that's something that you've seen build across the whole team environment? Is everyone has got that same mentality or is there still work to do in that area? No, I don't know. I feel like um, in terms of team environment, like every team really in Rainbow Six Siege right now has some way to go in terms of like creating like a the perfect team environment. We're no different. But I do think that like there's some players who are more open to discussion than others. And Prano is definitely the most open to discussion, I think, on the team. Uh, there's other players who are definitely less open to discussion, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is just like finding the right balance so that everyone has uh, their say in that I, I'd rather someone like Prano like be critical of some of the ways that we do stuff rather than just fully accept it because ultimately, you know, I'm, I'm a human, Lazar's a human. We do things not always the best way sometimes. Titan's a computer though, right? Titan is a computer, yeah. He, he don't count. That's why I didn't mention him. Uh, but yeah, like, yeah, he is literally an android. Um, but when it comes to like the human coaching staff, obviously, you know, we are we are sometimes going to see things in a different way, and sometimes we see things in a different way because we're watching all five perspectives from the players. Uh, but when you do that, it's really important to listen to what the players have to say. And there is definitely some people in our team who don't say very often, or at least often enough, what it is that they see or what what it is like to play. Uh, in the way that we're trying to play things. And the one thing I do really appreciate about Prano is that he will quite bluntly be like, no, that's not going to work. Or no, nah, I don't see that this will work the way that you see it will work. Or he will just flat out say the way we're doing stuff is shit. And that's yeah, fine. Um, I think, sorry if I interrupted you. No, it's I think, fine. Like, there's, like we had problems with this before where like people, like they get mad about something and they just keep it for themselves. And like in the end, they just explode. And then we had like some problems in the team before, not even with this mm. roster, but like, with rosters before and stuff. So like when people aren't open, like like open about their feelings and they feel like this is not working or they're not satisfied with the role or not happy with the role or whatever. And they just like keep it to themselves and they just explode. It just makes it worse. So uh, for me personally, I still think we have some players that are like, less likely to talk, to talk about the issues that they're seeing um, than others, but it has gotten better because like, we encourage them to like, talk about everything and be honest mm. and open about it. And I think and, it's like, pretty important. And I, th and I think on your side, like, this is something that I, I look at an awful lot with a, a great amount of interest because I think if you look to a, I suppose like an air quotes, professional sports team, right? Like, I mean, I know football, for example, has this problem too. I think because of the age of a lot of players that are involved in these teams is... It's not always really an ego thing, but it's almost like an experience thing as well, where communicating as part of a team hasn't really ever been part of someone's life skill and they're learning very much for the first time on, okay, here's how we should act in a team environment. Here's, you know, how we should communicate to one another. Here's the things that are important in this sort of atmosphere. And it is a very kind of new thing. And I suppose, although it's the exposure, again, limited to just secret, because that's the team that you've been in all this time, it does seem to be across most of EU, if not the whole scene, and even to a larger extent, all of esports, there are some players that do kind of struggle to build those skills to fit into a team environment. And that is what gives a lot of unpredictability in some games. It's a player might be having an off day. They might not be communicating at the same level. They haven't got the experience of when uh, a situation goes south and things really goes to pot and you're not quite sure where to go from there. What on earth was that? Is that you, Emma? I, I guess it was something in my mic, mate. My bad. Yeah, Maybe. Fair enough. Awesome. But yeah, like, do you find that to be the experience? I mean, even looking back at the time and Ghost Killer as well, like... Do you think that that's something that the scene, the scene overall needs to build on? Is kind of the team, air quotes, professionalism in a way for players? Uh, I think definitely. I mean, like most of the teams or like most of the players that come into the competitive play, like start when they're 18 or even before the year of eight or the age of 18. And they haven't like really 
been into an environment where they have to communicate a lot. Mm. Um, they've been going to school, or if they haven't like played any sports as their hobby or whatever, football or anything, they're just like more like solo kind of guys. So yeah. I think like there's a lot of players that need to like work on that. And I think like a good example for that. I don't know if he will he would like to be mentioned here, but like Corey told me when he got into like pro play the first time when I was on PS4 still um, like he was 18 years old when he got picked up and he had some problems like with understanding how a team should work and like he was pretty stubborn and stuff and it has gotten better over time and I think it's like the case with like a lot of te- a lot of people and a lot of players like they need to understand that it's like a team game and even though you're a pretty good player on your own you can't win on your own um, so yeah I basically mm. think that a lot of players a lot of younger players uh, especially need to develop that skill. Yeah, I imagine to a large level it's the same for you as well here at uh, and Fresh, I guess, too, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I said this last week, is that, like, a lot of people in esports is people are still kids, right? Um, they're still, still young, who have not necessarily got a lot of life experiences. Um, and that's where I guess support staff come in and, you know, got to be open open to that kind of stuff um you know teams that do well generally are teams that are operating as a team not just like five individuals that can all aim um you know if you look at secret themselves that challenger league season you know and even the two splits of eu league you'd say you know in terms of like aim and raw kind of gun skill they're not up there. And even the Challenger League season, like nobody really expected you guys to go up there. Um, um, but the way that you are actually kind of operated as a team that season is what got you there, I guess, in my opinion. No, that's right. I would say our biggest strength was that we had really good teamwork and that we were able to like do things that other teams found very difficult. We weren't relying mm. on running around getting kills. People people see the like the teamwork aspect is like a bad thing. They're like, oh, they don't have any individual players that can like carry them or some bullshit like this. And, that's, and that like, was a big narrative for you guys initially, right? Like, was, yeah, oh, they've yeah, got no big fraggers. And then here's wallets. Prano, number one, all the way through, go figure. Yeah, and the, the thing is, like that that mindset is completely wrong because you're trying to view the game in a way that the game isn't played. Like for the last how many seasons we've had like a utility based meta where everyone has to be good at clearing utility. You have to be able to drone correctly. You have to be able to manage like basically how will you do everything within the game, and you can't just run around and kill people. And uh, like we were one of the most successful teams in Challenger League during that period of time. And I would say that we were relatively successful in EU League, but you have to remember that over half of our team, like nine months ago, were playing in Tier 3. There's still a long way about, right? Like, and that yeah, means... I think that's, what, that's what I was getting at. Yeah, you've got... You picked, um, you picked people up that are just were relatively unknown, I guess, in yeah, terms of... everyone was. Like, the pro including Prano. Yeah. Like, Prano, it, Prano, like, to me, I knew Prano because of when I was with Horace, like, we'd scrim uh, Goskilla sometimes when Prano was on Goskilla. And I said this to Prano as well, like, at the time, but, like, our impression of the German scene as part of the UK scene was that everyone was kind of bad. And I was, like, super shocked when I first joined and saw that, like, basically Prano was, like, a really, really solid player. And then to see the, like, the players that we were trialing, both Hive and Expo, were, like, really solid players as well. Uh, better than, like, a lot of players uh, that I'd, like, seen previously who were more well-known. Like, there's this real thing where people would say that, oh, you know, we just had Expo because he was Chaos's brother, but there's, that's, like, so far from the truth. We trialed, like, I don't know, 20 people or something, and he was the best person for that yeah, role, like, a I million times over. Time. He was a really, really good player. He still is a really good player. Yeah, uh, going into that a little bit, before we decided on to, like, pick up two German guys that are really unknown, we tried a lot of uh, English-speaking players as well to make an English-speaking team, um, but it like we just felt that communication is like a big part, and I think it's fair to say that when I made the suggestion to trial the German players like Expo and Hive, people weren't as keen on doing that before because they thought like, oh, they're not as good, like they don't have any experience at a high level. And I was like, ah, oh, let's let's just try it because it, like it might just work better for us if we communicate uh, well enough and stuff, and it's just easier to communicate in German than it is in English for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, we tried it and it worked out and. Then we picked them up. So even though we tried some play, uh, PL players or like players that had like pro league experience before, it just didn't work as well as with German players. And I think it's like important to know that like the name 
itself or the experience isn't everything it's also the fit in the team that makes a mm. team great uh, i really kind of harp back to so as we can touch on those roster changes a little bit more um in a minute actually i do want to kind of jump back into challenge league for a second where it all kicked off because i think these boys are sick and tired of me probably saying at this point i think here he goes again but i remember you watching you that game. that game against crazy on cafe i really enjoyed yeah, watching we all think that game was shit by the way i know you do <laughs> But to me, it was it was one of the rare games that you got to see where, like Amurta was saying, it isn't a game that's led by someone running around the map just clicking on two or three heads, right? I mean, you look at BDS versus G2 on that map. Like, Shaiko, stuck in a hell, just has, what, two or three players watching him? Kills all three and runs out, and it's like, look, that's great to watch, but it's not a team game when it comes down to that. Whereas you compare your guys, you guys coming up against Crazy that ended 6-6, it was a really good game. And I think that's when a few people then started taking notice and thinking, this isn't a team that's built around an individual player running around and fragging his head off. It is a much more, you know, team-orientated team, as weird as that sounds to say. And obviously we saw that epitomising you guys getting into EUL. How did that final game feel, that final play day, after you knew that Penta had completely fucked it up against Sisu and thrown it away, and you were in that game where you got a Vice starting to talk some shit and you managed to turn it around? How did that moment feel? Oh, well, I have to go back on that a little bit. Like, uh, we knew that our chances are very slim going into that play day of making it. So the only thing on our mind was uh, just to not let Gamma make it. Or back then they were... What was their name back then? I don't... I don't uh, well, they love Diffuse Kids. Diffuse Kids, yeah. Kids, yeah. We, we just didn't want them to win it. So as soon as Penta just threw like, the game against Sisu and we thought they would win for sure, um, we were hyped enough and we thought we would have a, we would have a chance so basically when the first map started i don't know who it was but some of us like some some someone said to just turn off the chat because we knew that they would like trash talk a lot yeah it was me so, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> so we just turned off the chat and stuff in the first map so we didn't even see the really gotta win those comments and stuff and like we didn't we didn't really care about it so after we, like we saw it after the first map and after we drew the first map like we came back we were even more hyped, and they chose to play Clubhouse again. We just knew we, we could win. So, yeah, back, like after knowing they trash talked a little bit and you really got to win those, like I thought at that point they just lost the game. Uh, and yeah, I think the feeling, like it was pretty, pretty loud on TeamSpeak back then. Like as soon as the last kill happened and we won the game, I think everybody was just happy. Like for me, it was. A dream come true, I would say. I think it's not, I'm not ashamed to say it. I just wanted to play U League. That's why, or Pro League back then. Uh, that's why I bought a PC in the first place. That's why I switched to like playing on PC. Um, so yeah, uh, everybody just was really, really happy. I, mm. I think <laughs> it's kind of it's that moment that I think a lot of players look towards outside of those in Tier One looking to go and win a major or win the league or win SI, for example. But that elation of being promoted from this is a hobby kind of right now that I might get paid a bit of money for to then becoming, this is now a full-time career because we made it to the big leagues. Like, that's almost an indescribable as a feeling, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's a different feeling also of, like, making it on your own and then being picked up by a T1 team and just just uh, jumping straight into, like, Pro League or EU League. Mm. I think it's a different feeling of, like, achieving it on your own. So, yeah, I think it's, it, it makes it a bit more special. Hmm. And then obviously you come into EUL stage one and the real fun dynamic in our friend group was that it wasn't until the final play day that Chaos and Secret played each other. So between, between Steph and Fresh, there was a very, not mm -hmm. jaded or cagey relationship, shit. but it was so very, we, we, very we quiet. But at the same time that they couldn't talk too much about the games because they knew they didn't want to give anything away to the other side, but both were absolutely sucking dick at that time. Like we are playing so bad that we can't have a shared like element of defeat in this and i think for both teams it's worth going through on fresh's side obviously for chaos for you guys for secret what that journey was like because i wouldn't say you even started out terribly right you got two draws you drew against narvi the second week you drew against vitality was it yes. it wasn't it wasn't a win and the game against uh narvi was the biggest fucking throw because you were at six and four and then doki just walks through every your shields twice them. and kills everyone it just yeah, it, it just happens it it's crazy I mean, Don't remind me. talk me through the start of that season because it looked so close and then it all just kind of fell off a cliff very, very soon after. Um, I mean, yeah, we played the first games pretty well. Like, it was our first Yuli game, so we kind of hadn't had, like, high expectations going in. Um, we just wanted to play our game and it went pretty well. Like, we played pretty well. We were leading, as you said, and we threw the game, so 
even though we drew at the end, we kind of thought like, oh, okay, it's our first Yuli game, we'll do better next game and stuff. So everybody was not as like down as we could be because of throwing a game. And we go back to the Vitality game and like some players just had a like really poor performance, like individually. So we couldn't like win some rounds which we should have won. There's all the that one as well. well. So the rehosts as well. Oh, that was yeah. like a real big problem in that game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's another game. Yeah, you got nicked away because, from like, you as well. Yeah. We were like, we were like super hyped, and I remember like being like, I think we were four two up on attacks, and we were like, we knew that we were like gonna win that game, and then we had like three or four rehosts in that game, and it just killed the momentum, and we just played shit. Everyone got so tilted about the rehosts. Uh, the whole thing was just like really bad. Yeah. It just mm. it started really, really, really bad. Then yeah, you come we, back yeah. and they just they ran shields like two rounds in a row and you guys were just like, well, fuck, right, in the last two rounds. Uh, yeah, that's very true. Yeah, yeah, I remember uh, that. I just remember switching to Thermite mid, like at the, the later stages of the game, like the last few rounds playing Thermite. Um, yeah. Just because like I thought we had to do something. Uh, because like we, I think we were up 4-2 and then we were behind yeah, like either 6-5 or 6-4 even. So I just wanted to get that one point. But like after that, we just lost five games in a row i think or yeah it was even? i think it was five but yeah so like that's kind of uh yeah. like we played against all the good teams or like every every team is good but like all the more experienced teams and like very strong teams that were on the high like we played bds we played virus pro we lost um what did we play after that we played rogue we lost on club that's that's what i remember yeah. as well like i i didn't have like an individual great game there Mm. And then we played G2 on Villa as well, and we lost 7-5, which we yeah. thought we could have won as well, or at least drew. Like, we had a pretty good chance of making that one. We didn't. And then, yeah, at the end, we just played. Uh... And you got a freebie with the last game of that split. Yeah, that's true. That was actually a <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a freebie actually, that would come out to help you coming into stage two when it came to staying up at the end of the day, right? Yeah, that's I, uh, true. Yeah, I'm still bitter about that game, but I won't go on about it. <laughs> I, I mean, I understand why no, 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 you went no, no, there. This though, is this, this is the prime time to kind of talk about this a little bit, actually, because obviously we've spoken around secret, but chaos. Like, at what point, fresh, did you look at it all and just go, "I'm fucking done"? Like, we're on five draws, four losses. We've got five points. We can't scrape a win from anywhere, despite coming so close. Because I think that was, if anything else, the best example of why draws suck in a tier one competition. Yeah, I mean we. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I I was done after that that secret game that split. I was just like, I can't I can't do this anymore. Um, because we were every game we were very well prepared. Um, we was unlucky with a few draws. We got away with we played against Empire and we got away with a draw. Um, but we were very competitive with every team and we got railed by two teams that split and it kind of felt like we didn't really deserve to be bottom and we should have had two or three wins but yeah it's one of the things right it happens um but yeah like i said still bitter about the the, the secret game still I mean, in all seriousness every single time it came to like looking at the results of the other teams come in we would just always pray for a draw because yeah, draws that, in that league that, is like it just kills the, the whole league about us. yeah when you're looking at it, there's there's only nine play days, um, and you just like it's better no matter where that other the other two teams are if they draw. It's just, yeah, it really is. You don't ever want the other team to win. You just want them to draw. You want to win your yeah. game and the four other games you draws, and that's yeah, that's that's literally it. Yeah, it's anyway. We <laughs> we can talk for days about how shit the format is but I'm sure, I'm sure there's plenty of time to get towards the back end of it to talk it about it but you, you, you're, you're right even on paper right because a win is three points being added into the system a draw is two points being added into the system like it literally is yeah. the best no two points yeah, and each team gets one for two teams. come oh, on mate put well, one on one together it's the most simple mathematical sum you'll ever do in your life two get introduced I'm into the whole system Mate, he's an accountant. He's not like a league ops admin. He doesn't have a clue about this sort of thing. It's all right. Now, the two points coming oh, yeah. in there means there's, there's less in circulation. So again, it becomes like less worth overall to others. So it stacks out well. Um, but then let's talk about between stages, right? Between stage one and two, both sides made some changes. Secret was an okay and through and made the two that came in. Why the pickups that you made? He yeah, at the time, I think there's a couple of question marks, but let's talk around nah, them. They made smart ones, they made dumb ones. So, <laughs> like, the, the, no the, the first thing... Hey, you the our change has been done. Yeah, yours are wobbly as fuck, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> secretly wasn't wobbly. Secretly, no, secretly is a great. Fantastic yeah. player. Um, but, yeah. 
He got forged in the fires of Yukin, mate, playing for Fierce. I mean, he didn't uh, give a fuck about Yukin. And, um, <laughs> like, like, did. Like, he didn't give a fuck no. about Yukin, and at that point, he'd had enough of um, playing with Joe the way Joe was playing at that time. Um, you know, Joe's evolved. Now he's been on that Navi roster a while, but when he was playing with the fuck, it was Fierce, wasn't it? Yeah, it was um, with Kayak and the boys. They, yeah, they were they were struggling. You know, Joe would sleep in, miss scrims, all that type of shit, and secretly just didn't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of speaking on his behalf here, um, but yeah, he he uh, he was just putting himself on Ash and Twitch DMR and shit like that, and secretly a hard spot. So you can't really rate him on what he did in Yukon, to be honest. No, no, no. So I'm half mean when I say Forge in the Fires of UK. Almost like you're getting a bit of time in there to deal with the sort of shit that goes on in Tier Three, Tier Four Siege in the UK, and we all know what that can be like yeah. on Twitter sometimes. It can be a right laugh. But t- let's talk around the change you, you made then. Oh, so, go on, go on. I was just going to say, you were talking about tier four. Did you see that guy from Belong? Just like, I did his whole team in a Twitlonger. Bilzy? No. Yeah, big up Bilzy. <laughs> oh, just no way. His whole team out in a Twitlonger. That was no cool. way. That, I need to see that, right? That's a link at me but, after. Th- there's one bit where he talks about his teammate just like tabbing out and playing Valorant and stuff in between rounds or some shit. I'm sure yeah. I read that. Reminded me of uh, IV when he used to just tab out and play Rust when he was doing our warm up scrims. He would die and then he would just play Rust. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh, okay. Interesting. I'll have to read that later. That'd be a, that'd be a right good laugh. Um, but yeah, okay. Let's talk about the pickups then. Obviously, Pratball Chate. The first thing to talk about on that front is that you had to change comms, right, Prano? So you went from being the German-speaking team, which appeared to be the fo- focus before, to then having to do English comms. What was that like as a change? Uh, I don't think it was that hard to be honest. Like, of course, it was like change, but like the callouts are mostly in English, anyways, and all of our players are pretty decent. Uh, English speakers, I would say. I mean, Hive is uh, pretty good English, and I think Draven already played in English-speaking teams, so yeah, he, he had like uh, experience in that. So it wasn't really that big of a change. Uh, it was just like kind like the first two or three days. It was kind of like wobbly of getting used to speaking only English the whole time. Mm. So I didn't think that was like quite a, quite the big change. As soon as we knew we would want to like replace uh, KS and Expo, uh, I personally knew we could go. English because like I know that those guys are able to speak or communicate well enough in English to play on a high level. Um, with the other guys, like uh, I mean, KS is pretty good. English is fine, I would say. Um, and Expo's English isn't that great, but he will tell you that by, like himself. So we were kind of limited to German speaking back then. But, yeah. I think it's check. okay to talk about like the trials we did. We trialed yeah, I, a I was bunch just about of people. You trialed a lot of people. We yeah, tried we, like we nearly twenty people or something. Like yes. it was so many, and you we got tried at the time, right? From, yeah, uh, yeah, we got from in Twitter post. <laughs> yeah, I remember <laughs> Leonski's Twitter post. Imagine trialing all of T three and T two, and I was like, dude, like, and then he deleted the tweet. I, I, I wanted to bookmark it, but he deleted it. That's Leonski has a really bad it. habit of making bad takes on Twitter that get himself in trouble with people. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it is what it, it is, but like we tried a lot, like first of all, we just wanted to uh, make one change, one roster change, and we tried to switch out one player, we wanted to stay full German, we tried some Germans out, after that didn't work, we kind of decided on uh, staying as a team, like the roster should stay together as it has been, but then we scrimmed a few more times and we just saw it, like it, it isn't working anymore, like we had some big issues within the team, we weren't winning any scrims at all, we were just getting slapped around, losing... 10 to 10 to 10 in scrims and stuff so it wasn't really fun to play and basically we, we had to make the like the decision to like either we try to make a roster change even though it won't work it's better than like not trying and then relegate in the end so we just came to the conclusion to like bench two players and then like make a bigger roster change and yeah then we had to try another like another like i don't know english people like six or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like there we, was quite we, a lot. I mean, just... We had a lot of trials back in the day. Like we we needed to like fit the right roles, find the right players because we didn't know like a lot of players, and also some players didn't want to join mm. or didn't want to trial even because they're like, oh, secret, they're like shit, they're like at ninth place at the moment, so they thought <laughs> they they make EU League on their own. In the end, oh, it, yeah. didn't, it didn't, uh, now they're, didn't now turn they're, out that way either. So they're playing in the tier three leagues again. Now they're um, in tier three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like we had Are some we problems. Are we thinking about the same person? Though, right? Yeah, <laughs> probably. We might well be. Yeah, yeah, we might well be. <laughs> So, oh. yeah, but in the end, like we we chose the best fit for us and then the best roles that fit our team. And, mm. Yeah. 
And there's, oh, yeah, there's, there's, there's one question I do want to ask in the middle, actually, because, again, this is a kind of this side of the fence thing that we'll never get really see as viewers, as casters, as whatever. What does trialling a player look like? Because I imagine you can't sit there and devise out a whole bunch of strats and try and run them together. There's probably no, something no, no, at a much no, no, more no, no, basic no. level. So I guess it, I'll ask you, since you seem so keen to jump in, yeah, what does it look it, like about, when you trial someone? <laughs> it's about like chemistry and about how they fit within the team. Like We assume everyone can shoot because, I mean we're looking to pick up a pro player not like a silver free so we assume everyone can can shoot I'm fucked. Uh, but it's more about how that yeah you are mate you're knackered you haven't even got eyebrows <laughs> let alone kids so um, we, we look for people who can nice. like communicate correctly we look for people who are like who we get on with uh we look for people who who basically can do do all the little tiny bits of communication that's important like playing with other players in, in like a little macro way so like for example we look for trials who could like hold flank drones and stuff like that you know players who could like do their role but also help other people when they weren't just solo players it was team play really we were focused on and that's the major reason why we picked up the players that we did but he was very really thing... patient as well yeah that's true like in terms of like obviously we would scream you at this at mm -hmm. this point this was like obviously six months ago or whatever um and we would see one person that you're piling and then we'd scream you a couple of days later and it'd be the same person but with a different second trial yeah um so you tried a few different combinations of that as well we tried a bunch of people from tier three and yeah, one thing i did. think that me and prano and you probably would agree on is that a lot of the players that we trialed were playing at a really really good level they're playing at a level where you know with a bit of help and a bit of time can definitely play in a tier one setting the what the worst thing about Siege, and I'll still maintain this, is there's an absolute abundance of talent in Tier 3 that's capable of being Tier 1 and Tier 2, but don't get an opportunity because they like there's no really good way to rate a player. Like You know what it is. People have shit stats. People have really good stats. That doesn't mean they're a good person within the team environment or a good player in that team. Um, and, you know... You, yeah, you did. You tried a few people from tier three. And, you know, at the same time, we were making roster changes on Chaos. And I was suggesting some of these people. And I don't know if it was egos or, you know, people just think tier three players are shit. But we didn't trial some of those players, if you know what I mean. Um, and I guess I wish we had. <laughs> you, did, you did it to tick a box, basically, right? Rather than actually doing a genuine trial to say, is this the right person for us or not? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We and, and it's, do you think it's like an element of nepotism, right? Where people look at it and go, "Oh, I played with this guy before," or "Oh, he's been on this team that I know really well." So yeah, I rate him. Is it kind of a is it gate kept almost somewhat by players and coaches in tier one? Do you think? Yes and no. Yeah. I, I, think, I think. T. Prano I think says yes, but go on. Is, explain your so explain your yes and no. That's what you were, sorry, you said yes and no. I'm just yeah, keen to know why you said say, yes and no. I would say in our, in our team, no, but I think in a lot of other teams, yes. Like we, we basically value players that, like I said, were team players that would bring us something different than what we already had. And yeah, people will say, oh yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't pick up like the top players or whatever, they're too expensive or something like that, or they wouldn't want to join us. But that's actually not really true. Like we could have picked up really whoever we wanted as long as like they were willing to, to join us. Um, we were just looking for people who we could kind of shape and mold into the players that we really wanted them to be. We wanted to develop players and, well, we picked up a really experienced player who's won the Invitational and then a player who has a lot of promise. Like, that's just yeah. what we did, you know? Like, we did the best of both worlds. I, I love know, how but... ba Batman just said everyone is terrible but not us. Oh, Murta 2020. <laughs> that's a quote for life, isn't it? <laughs> that's not what I mean, though, is it? You know what I'm saying. I mean, basically, well, you're like, no, it's not a problem in our team, but other teams, though, they've got this problem. <laughs> no, that is, that is what you said. No, but the, if, if you look at the roster changes, like, Secret went for Packbull, who was, like, he was a tier three, I mean, he was a tier two player right beforehand, but... Uh, mm. Yeah, he got dropped from not, that team, though. Not many other EU League teams would have even taken the chance on Packbull, and then three players into the season, everyone thinks he's a god, if you know what I mean. So I think that's what Amet is getting, is that there would be other teams, Chaos included, we would have never tried Packbull had, had he have been suggested. Which is wrong. Um, where Secret did, they had that attitude of, we're going to look at these kind of players that we can mold and that we want right for our system. And, you know, the ends kind of, or the means just for the ends. Um, mm. You know, it, it came out well. But there was a lot of other teams that, in tier one, that would gatekeep that and wouldn't even have trialed people in the first place. And yeah, do you think, think do you, do you think that's kind of like a development trial. piece? Because looking at it, or was it really, did you choose that panel or were you interested in trialing him? Yeah. Prano was the main guy he wanted to trial pack, but I think, if I remember rightly, I yeah. think it was him and Hive. I mean, I was, I was a lot like looking around for players that would fit the role we wanted, and I, th I thought like, 
people from what I've heard from other players and interviews and stuff would fit into the category we meet we need. So yeah. I wanted to trial him even though we didn't have a lot of time. And I think that's also like a point that like for Chaos yeah. why they didn't trial all of the players. Like we don't have a lot of time time between stages to make like roster changes and to trial like everybody and their moms and stuff. So in the end, uh we just took a bit more time than Chaos did. And uh, I think we made the right choice in doing so. You held your nerve a lot better than we did. <laughs> well, one day, Shatter and Red Groove were in our team, and the next day, next one, and uh, secretly joined, basically. I think it was smart to kind of bring people back who had already played, but at the same time, if you'd already kicked them before, you have that thing that, like... I don't know, it's like having an ex-girlfriend that cheated on you. You don't really want to, like, hang about with them anymore, I guess. You're talking about feels like that. yeah. And, I mean, like, and, yeah, and next one. I mean, next one played for you guys before, right, as well. So it's the yeah, same kind of thing. Yeah, he filled in, yeah. Mm. It's interesting because, you know, I, I imagine you guys are going to say yes, but I'll point to a team that's done something similar in terms of taking a risk, and that was Na'Vi, right? Now, you might argue they've done it because they were friends with the players they picked up in Joe and Blur. Um, Blur was the top performing player on that team this season in terms of a new pickup really shining through and again yeah, you may it's... think there are different reasons to it but is it nothing else showing that there are some of these players that are sat in tier they... 3 that never really get too much of a conversation that can deliver at the big levels yeah I mean Navi, Navi did well um, in terms of you know I spoke to Turkey before they've got a kind of vision of how they want to play and that's why they picked up Blur and Joe was around they wanted to mold them and that whole team into a star um but now we also had the luxury of their stage one performance, whereas, you know, Secret and Chaos didn't. Um, Yours is do or so die, we, right, ultimately. We were both gambling. They gambled, you know, he, even even Rogue, right? Obviously, nobody was safe, but you could have... They had a bit more security. Astro got fucking discovered, the, finished first, and then still going yeah, to relegations, mate, yeah. The likelihood of being relegated even after taking the gamble um, for Na'Vi was low. You know, they, they were scared, at, you know, mid, midway through the but they yeah. were kind of a bit a bit 50 50 but they pulled through it um so they had a bit more luxury in terms of time and the fact that they probably wouldn't get relegated whereas you know the the magnitude of the transfers to secret and chaos were were more mm. you know you you yeah. guys pulled off some really good transfers and you know ultimately you you started that second split really well you know you beat g2 whoever else you beat and that was you done i was saying after like four games and that you were safe and you was like no 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 but, Emerta you know, is forever the kind of you know he's he's the guy who won't celebrate until the time hits zero yeah, right you know he'll always wait right. until the end yeah always which is a, a good trait to have I think as well you know hum humble and all that along the way until of course it's time to celebrate and get the champagne out but Prano on your side we came into stage two you guys won those first four games and everyone was like holy shit what happened to Secret in the off season what do you think and if there's more than one then fair enough but what do you think was the single biggest difference coming into stage two compared to, say, the end of stage one? Was it just mindset because you had a break? Was it something new that the new pickups brought along? Was there some new element to the team that you didn't see before with those pickups in there? What was that big instrumental change that led to you getting those four wins? Uh, I think there's like quite a few reasons for that. But like first Go of ahead. all, of course, we had our honeymoon phase. Uh, like We were new together. We played pretty well, and we just had fun playing together and stuff. Every team that makes roster changes knows the feeling of a honeymoon phase. Um, we just had that, and then uh, also, like, we got a bit lucky with the schedule, I would say. Like, first game we played, we played against G2. Um, they had some struggles in the team, uh, at, like, at the beginning. I think they also uh, underestimated us a little bit, and we had a good game plan of playing with the Clash and the Monty. Um, after that, Clash and Monty got banned every single time, <laughs> even if we didn't want to play it. But <laughs> Apart yeah. from Chaos. Hey, hey, we didn't ban Clash against yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. That was, and that that was a mistake. Well. Uh, wait, what? Oh, uh, never yeah. went. Um, you don't want that regardless, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we had like we had a bit of a like a bit of, like luck, I would say. Like as I said, G two had some problems. We won against them pretty convincingly, but they had some problems. They underestimated us. We had some good counter strategies. Then we played Rogue, who like obviously didn't win a single game, so they were a bit of a freebie in stage two for everybody. Um, and then we played. I think did we play Vitality after? I think we played Vitality we after, and they yeah. chose to pick theme park so we theme could park, yeah. yeah and so we could decide to play like defense first so that's where we basically won that game like we won five defensive rounds uh, so we just had to like squeeze into attacking rounds so it's basically easier to do that uh, so we won that game and then we played chaos uh, we won against like on oregon 7-4 i think if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. 
I mean, yeah, fresh it, remembers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not to be like rude or anything, but they were like with us more to the bottom of the table of the EU League team, so we knew we had a chance against them playing. Yeah. Um, we went on to win like three attacking rounds as well, so that was kind of a good split there. And yeah, then then it all fell down a cliff a little bit. Um, although we, the results were closer than we like played in stage two, I think we five seven against BDS, we drew against Virtus Pro. Both games where I didn't perform as well as I should have, and I wanted to. Mm. But like, yeah, like we, we we at least got some more points or like a point more and stuff, and we played better. But yeah, I think we got we got lucky at, at the beginning with the schedule and with the games we played. And also, we just were like at the honeymoon phase because our roster just came together, and yeah, everybody was hyped and motivated to play. Mm. So you think it's once? I guess the kind of concern there that you have is you're coming into next year now, where you won't be making any changes, I expect, and obviously your calls are about to kick off too for SI. Um, yeah, but we with, we have well, a lot of time now, Des, though, to like fix problems and to like actually work on our lineup. That's that's what you I was going to ask think, about. So sorry. what problems? So once that honeymoon period has disappeared, what problems? And I guess again, you might not want to go into it, but what do you think has been uncovered that then therefore needs tackling now that the kind of the dust has settled, the players are now part of the furniture? What do you think needs to be worked on? I mean, I there's mean, not. Can I go first? Yeah, there's not like one single thing or like big things that need to be worked <laughs> yes, on. Yes, carries on talking. <laughs> Fuck you, over. <laughs> no, go on, Prada, Carry on, mate. <laughs> I I'm talking. Motherfucker. Yeah, oh, man, I was talking a lot. Like, I, I need to talk sometimes. Like, after scrim, he's like. <laughs> Coaches like just never shut the fuck up, do they? Carry they on. They never do. They never do. <laughs> so yeah. So there's not a big thing to uh, to point out. I'd say there's like a lot of things, but like I think every team would agree when they make roster changes at the beginning. Like there's just a honeymoon phase where everything, every single thing, just it just works. Like you don't have to say a lot. It just works. It just clicks. And then after after a period of time, like these things just disappear, and it's all about finding that groove again and that like. A team play again to to make those little things work. I think mm. that's the main main thing. Amerta, you may now speak. I mean, he summed it up. I was just going to say, in EU League Split Two, we weren't a team because we only just brought the players across, so we had to kind of just focus on like all new strats, all new stuff. That we had a very limited map pool. I'm sure like everyone who literally watched our games realized that. So it was more a case of like yeah. we were just trying to prepare to win the games in front of us, and now we have time to work on actually being a team. And I think that's like a really important aspect that a lot of people would have kind of forgotten about. Like, yeah, when you make two changes, you're changing essentially half of the team. We changed the IGL. We changed a lot of roles around. We changed our approach to the game. We included new operators into our lineups. You know, it was a big change. So a little bit in EU League split too, I feel like we were kind of limited because we only prepared so much stuff beforehand. And, um, well, it was easy to kind of counterban us, easy to kind of like beat us in ways that we couldn't really adapt to because our team was a new team. Makes sense, fair enough. Um, and obviously you came off the back of things where I think I remember actually us speaking after play day eight, this is middle of October, me, you and Fresh, and we were all, I think I was probably casting, I have a feeling I was casting, or I was at least analysing it or something, the secret versus temper game. And we were there like, oh, come on, if you, if you do this now, you're still in a good spot to make major, and then it kind of ended seven and three, and we were just like, oh, fuck. It was a real letdown after how well the season had gone, right? Uh, yeah, but Tempera, uh, Tempera are a weird team. I don't think anyone will mind me saying this, but like Tempera are a weird team. They like, they are just like our kryptonite. They just do weird stuff against us, and they they play in their own little weird meta and their own little weird game. Oh, and they're, yeah, they're very good at like, thing. Yeah. yeah, and they're very very good at like um, like counter stratting and finding like a tiny little gap. If you have a tiny 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 gap, then like. <laughs> <laughs> they just will abuse that gap so hard that it's I mean, insane. as they did against a lot of teams, right? Final four games, they won every single one. I mean, yeah, when you're sat in boot camp... Uh, I mean, I mean, all I'm going to say is if you're sat in boot camp and you can basically play the game for like 12 hours a day all in the same room, it's easy to find gaps in things and fully commit to it. But when you're playing from home and you haven't boot camped, it's a lot harder. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then wind it back to your side then, Fresh. Chaos. Yes, right. You made the change that obviously you made. Uh, to be fair, I saw, the, I saw the change initially and was like, oh... Next one, I'm crying about together. Surely that can only go well. Apparently, fucking yeah, not. That's what we talk to well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, talk to us about that, right? The stage, it was better than stage one in some ways. You know, you actually managed to get yourself a win on the board, which is something, admittedly, the one against Rogue, as said earlier on. Sorry, Ace, if you're still in chat, was an absolute freebie anyway. And the final play day against Vitality was really, I think I said it to you after the game, I was like, that is the only time I feel like I've ever seen Chaos play to its potential. 
And even then, it was an absolute fucking meme game. So what took... I'm not even going to say what took so long for it to go right, because it never truly got right, right? But why did it never work from the start? Why didn't you go through the same kind of effect as what Secret did with the honeymoon phase, the new improvements, things like that? Stage 2 specifically. Um, the, uh, the schedule, the honeymoon, our first game was against BDS um, of the season. We had a really solid plan against BDS and, you know, maybe a bit of a hot take. We should have won that game in my eyes, the prep we did. Um, you know, I, everyone experiences this against BDS, I'm sure you guys did. They're very easy to read, they're very easy to counter, but when you get into the server, they're just not. <laughs> they're just <laughs> they're fucking click else. heads, mate, and you can't do anything um, else about it. But, you know, we, we played the first two games of that split at boot camp, um, and we knew the first game was against BDS, you know, in everyone's head, nobody's saying it, but in everyone's head, we know it's we're going to lose that game. Um, but we had good counters, and we had a good plan. And the first, you know, the, the whole thing for stage two, people's mental got the better of them. Um, the first round against BDS, we were so jittery, so nervous. People couldn't shoot straight. People, you know, you guys have seen Chaos in Scrims in terms of the, the two secret guys. <laughs> the Scrim heroes, Chaos. Absolute yeah. Scrim We've heroes. Seen them. Because <laughs> We've seen them. We would destroy people in Scrims. The yeah, only the place you fucking got, see them. Mate, the day after we got relegated, we scrimmed BDS, and over three maps, they got about five rounds. And it's like, why can't we be this fucking good in, in real games? But moving back to that you first game... You don't need on, I guess. Well, I'm joking, yeah, I'm just like... this completely, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> I'm completely joking. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we um, we played BDS, the first game of this, the split. We lost that game. And after that, it felt like people's mentality was in the mud a little bit. You know, we the day after was the most horrendous day. And bearing in mind, we had a game on the Wednesday, right? So this was the Tuesday. We'd lost BDS on the Monday. It should have just been like, right, work hard, focus, get ready for this Narvi game, because we thought we could beat Narvi. And we drew, but we changed the whole team's approach and mentality, literally at boot camp after one game. And it was like, the, the honeymoon period we just didn't have. Um, so, you know, it, th that's kind of what happened. Um, we beat Rogue, which was, I guess... When you look back on freebie. it, it's not a surprise. It was a freebie. Yeah, every, um, every team did. But, you know, at, at that time, that was kind of big for us. I remember when we won, secretly it was just like... Because obviously, you know, when you, you just listen on TeamSpeak, me and Hyperina were listening to TeamSpeak. It's just like, guys, we won. And the the surprise in Secretly's voice was incredible. Because it was like, holy fuck, we've won again. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then we the the good performance we we put in a really solid performance against VP, um, and that day everything just felt right. And if we'd achieved that kind of consistency, we would have been fine. You know, the all of the players on that roster have talent. You know, Vita had a really cool split. Vita's got some of you know the the talent he's got. If he can kind of harness it, um, and kind of get. Get right mentally, he can be one of the best players in the world. Um, but yeah, you know, we we just didn't ever get to the level that we set ourselves in scrims that split, which was you know, like I said, I was gone after the stage one game against Secret, and yeah, I just don't think we ever really got to the, to the levels that we wanted to be at, really. Mm. Kind of hard, there's so much to say, and I can go on about it all, all the time, but yeah, you know, you. Yes, mate. I have a question for you that is related. So, like, how much did our success in the first four games of the league oh, really man. have an impact that, on Chaos? Because I imagine that, that basically one. relegated you, right? Because you that lost play, the first three games at boot camp, and then that we won one. four. We, we just lost to BDS, right? And we're like, oh, it's all right. It's all right. Secret have G2. You know, uh, at that point, we're like, what, neck and neck? You're three points in front of us at that point. And we're mm -hmm. like, it's all right. Secret have G2. Um, they'll get beat. <laughs> And then we're just seeing fucking Pat Bull running around on Monty slapping the fuck out of G2, and we're just like, yeah, this is it. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, it, it was hard, because we, we didn't get our first win until, like, round four, round five, something like that. Um, we got a couple of draws, but with you guys just winning, the gap just went like that, and the gap increased. Um, mm. And obviously, you know, for a team that was struggling, like our performance, our struggle was mental. It wasn't that the people didn't have skill, you know. Brian, everyone on that team's got a lot of skill, um, mechanically. But 
the the mental issues we we deserved to get relegated because we we couldn't get to the performances that we were getting in scrims um and the way we were playing in scrim we would just get on the get in the server and do things completely differently um which is a shame really i would say that like um there was a lot of solo play as well when you'd like watch chaos back like i would see like a lot of solo play and then on the last play day when there was nothing to play for and they had hyperino and they had to play as a team to like help hyperino then they played really good and they won it was just yeah. i don't know like there was so yeah, much yeah. potential in that in that roster i think and so much potential to do well in this in the league but I mean, I'm glad yeah. you didn't because I mean, like, we stayed. Because you've got a job, and I yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, basically. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I knew I was leaving before the before the season was over. Anyway, um, I kind of made that decision, but yeah, um, the last game with Hyperina was really bittersweet. I was really, really happy with Hyperina, and he was running around playing ranked and beating pro league teams. Um, but the team were playing as a team around him, and yeah, it felt like apart from the VP game, it felt like the whole. The, the only time we played as a team with we two whole splits was that game and so it was really happy and then it was really sad because it was like if we could just fucking do that every week or even half of the weeks we'd have been fine but yeah it is what it is mm, fair enough and I, guess, I guess obviously with the change that came in like I mentioned earlier on I was really excited when I saw the next one on Crime were playing together again and thought we'd achieve some greatness there but I think I might have touched on it, it was individual players for the most part, even out on the road together. There was never really an element of them playing together or looking to make an impact together. Just why did you feel that never really got started? Um I don't know. <laughs> to be honest. You know, it was something <laughs> that we would talk about. Um, you know, we we talked about having our kind of core three of, you know, the, the Swedish guys, um, secretly Renault and Rito, being a little bit more disciplined, allowing Pran and next one the freedom to just seize opportunities that they saw. And yeah, I think everything just, just changes a little bit on game day. And I don't know if people were scared to make plays or, you know, nervous. But yeah, I guess, yeah. Uh, I didn't think there was a lot of Pepega stuff, to be honest just like pure Pepega plays. I, I, I mean, don't think I don't think anyone can deny like when you're like basically spawn peeking with Ella, like and a pistol for like basically no reason. Or Malusi with a pistol as well. Like I mean you're kind of asking really to get punished on stuff like that. And like we saw a lot of that. And then also like I yeah. In terms of in terms of like Vito's performance, I don't know what really happened with him, but like you didn't really touch on this, but I mean he went from one split being one of the stronger players in the team to like playing absolutely like i mean he wasn't playing it was like he had an, an eight-year-old brother who was he, playing on his account you know like it was wild yeah and i mean th this is a lot of what happened <laughs> i mean my apologies but that's kind of what it was like no 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 apologies you said it now no going back on that i mean let, let's be honest he had a really shit season he had a yeah. really shit split i mean he would say the same um, right i mean not that yeah, his eight-year-old brother was playing so. on his account i imagine not no <laughs> well we, you know, we, it, it comes back, honestly, I'm not sure how much our bootcamp helped us um, because of the way the team reacted after the BDS loss. And I think after that BDS loss, Vito lost a lot of confidence in himself um, and he probably lost a lot of belief in the team because, you know, I, I can talk about it a lot more now, you know, with Renault's retiring, they're not under KS anymore, I'm not part of them. Um, but, you know, we kind of agreed that you know, in, in our, we had a core kind of ideal, ideological split with the team in that some players just saw it as when you're going to fight, it's going to be fine. And then others, um, you know, me and Hyperina and a couple of the players kind of obviously saw the proper proper side of Siege, the way we wanted Siege to be played, which was, you know, work for the plan, you know, strategically beat people rather than just outfrag them. Because if you're relying on outfragging, as soon as you have a bad day, you're fucked, right? Um, and I think that change after the BDS game that, that we kind of went to really fucked us because we kind of we kind of went, right, this the team said this isn't working, let's go full monkey. And you know, we me and Hyperino didn't necessarily agree, but if the team has come to a consensus of that, then we couldn't really do anything. You know, we can't really say no, we should be playing more objectively, more strategically. And at the end of the day, you know, we had uh, at that time, we had some, we had players that were there that were, were mechanically skilled to do that. Um, but I think coming back to Vito specifically, probably at that point, I think he lost a lot of confidence in himself and he lost confidence in his team. And the rest of the split 
he was trying to make things happen all of the time. He was trying to... The way Vito used to play, stage one, and in the scrims, he would basically just kill, and kills would just walk into him. Um, and then the split two, he was just forcing everything. The game against you guys, Murta, and even the last game against Villa, where it didn't matter, he was always relegated. He was really trying to force gunfights and force, you know, force kills and that kind of stuff. And I think his confidence kind of just went down a lot, which is a shame because, like I say, he's one of the one of the better players that I guess have white cliff, and he could be a really good player. Yeah, I think I think so too. I think he is he, like a talent player. He's got player. a mechanical skill, and like the way he understands the game and the way he talks about the game. Obviously, you guys don't see that because you don't team with him. He's he sees the game in a really good way, and he's you know we spoke earlier about people voicing opinions. He's not afraid to voice his opinion which is good, um, but he, I guess the one thing about the Chaos and a lot of the Chaos players was the mental resilience of that team wasn't great. The ability to bounce back after losing or drawing, um, drawing was worse than losing, I guess. Yeah, drawing mm. definitely was worse than losing for us as well. The, the ability to bounce back from that was really hard. Getting up for a Wednesday game after a Monday game where you're drawn was horrendous. And yeah, um, Siege at the top level is mainly mental. And our mentality just wasn't there for whatever reason. And we worked, we worked so hard on it. You know, we spoke to, we spoke to people. We had sessions. We had private conversations. We had team conversations. We had, we tried literally everything we could to replicate our scrim performance in our game day performance, and it just didn't happen. Mm. Um. So yeah, that's I guess, you know, I. I remember Corey messaging me after after relegated, and he's like, "Why are you shitting on your team?" Because I said we deserve to get relegated, and it was like, "Well, we've been relegated, and we've known about these issues, um, and we just haven't solved them." It's not shitting on my team; it's is what we deserve. We couldn't. Yeah, I mean, you didn't totally sit there and go, "Oh, this individual player deserves to get relegated," right? You said, "As a collective, we deserve to get relegated." Yeah, I mean, yeah. you did. You didn't do a bagel. Let's be fair. Like, if we're gonna. <laughs> If we're gonna, like, call it what it is, oh you know? man, 2020 has been full, it's been so full, just like full of so much shit coming out of individuals in the in the community. It's definitely kept us all entertained during lockdown and shit, right? And it's I mean, gorgeous. Yeah, I, I mean, there was you know there there was other factors that I probably can't speak publicly about that we that we kind of went through um, as a team that are completely not related to Siege. Um, you know, we we kind of had heads up around the org, kind of looking to potentially drop um it's esports arm which is you know what chaos have kind of chosen to done as do as an organization um you know there, there were other issues that weren't just siege within that team which you know i guess will probably stay under wraps a lot of the time fair enough fair enough that's a good a good, little good retrospective the one thing i do want to touch on that we haven't really mentioned along the way because i know at the time there's question marks from me and a few question marks from you fresh when Jate was obviously picked up by Secret, moved into the team. And I was like, yeah. no, we're actually really sold and really convinced by this. And I think a lot of people naturally in the community were like, this is a team that's had a really bad stage one. You know, even Jate, looking back over it, wasn't an absolute standout player that, you know, was performing out of his brains while the rest of the team was really dragging him back. That was a very interesting pickup. And I guess I want to start on your side of Mert, or maybe actually go to Prano first. Why Jate in that case? I mean... It's uh, kind of also going with what we said earlier. We weren't looking at stats. Uh, we were looking at the fit. And we knew Shatter had like, a good amount of experience. Of course, he's an invitational winner. So we just wanted to trial every option we had. And it just clicked from the first scrim. Like, on a personal level, we had a lot of fun playing together. Um, I thought uh, Shatter... I've, I've heard the about the role. stupid shit that he might just run around and scream and do in a game sometimes to keep spirits high, right? Percolate. Do you also yeah. percolate now, by the way? Yeah. I mean, Hive, yeah. Hive was typing it earlier in chat, so I think by the sounds of it, it is a uh, thing. I mean, yeah, Hive is over-exaggerating a little bit as, uh, again. Like, he's taking it to the next level. He's being a bit cringe, but it is what it is. It's Hive. But no, we, we were having a lot of fun. We were doing a lot of, uh, like, shit doing scrims. Like, not shit, but like we were having fun. It's not all business. You need to have fun as well. It just clicked on a personal level. We were talking a lot outside of the game as well. So it just worked for us. And like personally, I think Shatter just played the wrong role on Chaos. Um, yeah. Like he was on like flank watching roles kind of thing. And I just don't think it fits his play style at all. He's like more of an aggressive player. Yeah. That's what he's doing with us right now. So yeah, I mean, we just, we just wanted to try every option and Shatter just fit right in. I, I mean, the perfect time for him as well, because he evacuated a burning ship then, right, Fresh? 
I mean, yeah. And that's that's that's, Sheffield, that's the segue for you to talk about him a little bit. Go on. Yeah, Sheffield when when we dropped him, he was very surprised. Um, and you know, it's very easy to sit here and say we shouldn't have dropped him. For me, Sheffield was on the wrong role. We had him doing flank watch, and he was very unsure about how to properly execute that role because he wanted to be aggressive. But then he's like, well, if I'm aggressive, I'm leaving flanks over my team, and he would always second guess what he was doing, and it wasn't his role. And, you know, we, we at the time, we brought Crying in, and obviously that's why the roles had to switch around for stage one. Um, you know, we we dropped him with hindsight. Maybe we shouldn't have. Maybe we should have dropped somebody else and put Chateau in a more aggressive role. We'll never know that. Um, and I remember saying to, to the team um, and to management, if we do drop Chateau, you can't sell him to Secret because they will get better if they pick him up a lot better. Mm. Um they did we sold him to secret which you know i guess i guess ultimately the org had a decision to make to receive money for a player that they decided to do that but from a competitive point of view it really wasn't the the right thing for us to do to sell one of one of the better players to a rival um but yeah i, I felt really really bad when we dropped chateau I mean, you know me and me and hyperina spoke to him and it, it was horrible because he didn't see it coming he wasn't the worst performer when we dropped, you know, it's the same with what you guys, we just felt we needed a shaker. And mm. Renault's was happy to jump onto that kind of flank watch role. Um, Renault's is a, I, I'm kind of a bit upset he retired because he's a really, really good guy. And he's a really valuable player in the team environment because he can do anything and he has the balls to do anything. Um, but yeah, so, you know, Renault's was going to drop onto that flank watch and the idea was to pick up a, an IGL and a um and somebody with more fire fire parts we did. Um not sure it was the right the right change. I uh you know I was the one who suggested that we drop Chateau as well, which you know at, at that time we were looking no player was safe between stage one and stage two, bluntly putting it. We had to make a change. And no player was safe. We looked at all of them, you know, me and Hyperino and, and management at the time and we spoke to a lot of the players, but it I'm really happy that it worked out well for him as well because he, you know, his teammates will tell you that he's a really good guy. He's a really nice guy to be around. He brings a lot of energy to any team that he's in. Mm. I guess it's kind of where the journey then ends for for chaos, but obviously for secret it kind of continues at this point, right? Like Qualls is the next thing coming up. We were talking a little bit um, before the podcast. Cool. Yeah, different conversation, I guess. I guess when you're looking at it in your guys' context here. Um, I think it was Prana before saying, I don't want to sit here and talk too much shit about anyone because we're still yet to play and God knows how it's going to go for us. But what are, your, expecta what are your expectations coming into Quals, Prano? Well, it really depends on who we're playing, I think. I mean, we've been working hard since... Uh, so you're praying for a freebie by the sounds of it, that's, uh, that says to I me. Mean, who isn't? Who no. isn't? <laughs> I mean, I, I would say that we have a good chance to get where we want to get to. I think it comes down to, as, as all things do in Siege, like if our plan that we have works and their plan doesn't work as well as ours does, and we get a little bit lucky and everyone has a good game, then yeah, we can win the fucking invitation if we want, you know? It's just it's the way it is. If everyone turns up with the right mentality and we all get our shots then do whatever if we turn up and we don't play the game the way we want to play the game then yeah we could lose but it is one of those things it's the same for every team in the game there's a yeah i mean there's there's a lot of opportunity there for you guys to to make the invitation and mm. like it's on you guys i think if you look at the kind of the the other teams they're all very beatable in that bracket in terms of the 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 teams and the, the seal teams that are in it um Obviously, you've got you've got that for a good draw, but you know there's there's no reason why you can't literally beat every single one of the teams. I mean, on on the level, some of the tier three teams are some of the scariest because we don't really know what they do and they play in a weird way. Like it is what it yeah. is. You did mention one before we started. I won't say. Yeah. No, there's, a, there's a bit of a stack in there. To be fair. <laughs> I mean, we all saw what oh, happened well. to Gamma, right? Shocked, yeah. surprised. We we haven't really seen too much of them since CL, I guess. But uh, not really. Those. That's all I gotta yeah. say on that part. You're really gonna win those. Yeah, I, I, I woke up and saw, I saw the tweet and I was just like, wait, is that real? Like, legit? Because everyone was kind of looking at them and saying, oh, this is one of the teams that can really push for this. And then it was like, guess what? You're out to a team that, frankly, I didn't know anything about until two seconds ago. White Tigers are the... They're, they're German. They're German. Right? Yeah. yeah. German. I mean... <laughs> 
But yeah, it's disappointing for that team, right? It's got to be really disappointing. They keep failing. It's disappointing uh, for any team that they loses really any game, Academy. right? <laughs> they, they, were, they were talking about being the Chaos Academy. They really are, right? They keep failing. Yeah, pretty much oh, true. I mean, it's, yeah. not, it's not wrong now you put it that way. So, yeah. I, 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 thought, I thought they would make it far into the bracket oh, and stuff because I mm. think they're a good team. But That, uh, that should have been a breeze for them. To be yeah. fair, just like CL should have been twice. So. Not going to lie, for some of the players, it makes me happy. Uh, for some, I feel bad because I know they're working hard and stuff. Yeah. But like some players never learn and they never stop talking. I think I have a good idea which player you're on about there as well. Um... One thing that has been a big subject, and I guess this is where we go a little bit off piece. We go through a QA and a in a little bit as well, but on a point here around uh, format, it feels like every time something goes wrong for a team, there is a very good reason for a team to then attack the format quite aggressively. But like a few pros have come in defence and said, you've got best of three. This isn't a best of one single limb bracket. You literally have a best of three to do well on. The fair argument on the other side being, if you wake up and have a bad day, you're out and that's it, you're done. My yeah, challenge to that being, what about... If you yeah, my point is, what about if you have a spot where you have your double limb, but you have to play both your games on the same day? Is that still an excuse of, oh, well, we have to play both our best of threes on the same day, therefore, of course, we're not going to do I well. Mean, what do you guys think of the honest, format? If, if they'd have been any good over the past year, they wouldn't be in tier three and have to go through the open qualifiers. Yeah, I don't know. That's so maybe that's a hot take, uh, right? But it, if they were in one is of it the fuck? Carry days, on. Well, uh, I don't know. How, they've got best of threes. I think yeah, some, so, it. someone, it someone, someone, someone put this on Twitter really well. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, it's, it's so competitive. Someone like, said this on Twitter. Fine. Someone said on Twitter earlier on that they were just like, after, at what point do you stop looking at a team and saying, oh, they deserve to win CL, they deserve to be at the top when it's been third, fourth, fifth, sixth finishes continuously now for almost a year, right? And I know this is kind of going back onto the Gamma Point run and talking around the format, but that was a pretty fair point that I thought I saw someone put out on Twitter earlier on, to be honest. Uh, I mean, if you don't win your games, you don't win your games. It's that simple. Like people can make any storyline up in their head that they want to, but at the end of the day, you've got to win your games. And they played a team who were fired up. They weren't afraid of them, and they beat them on two maps. So they won the game. That's it. Yeah. Like you can complain about the format, but at the end of the day, like there's no draws. Draws is the problem that everyone is complaining about with with the EU League and with other, other formats. Like they beat you on two maps. Right, like they deserve to win, and this could happen to us. You know, we could lose to to some I, I team don't we don't expect, Gamma or whatever, and it'd be the same story. You know, like we wouldn't go to Twitter and complain about the, the fucking format because we played a bad game. You know, it just is what it is. And I'm sure that like actually Gamma aren't coming to to like shit on the format. It's mostly like that comes from the fans and stuff. You know, people who want the team to do the best, they they will you could use that as an as an excuse or whatever, or mm. blame it on the format or something. But ultimately, the format, in my opinion, for the the qualifiers is actually really good, and you get you're getting an option. I mean, how many games allow teams that are not even in leagues to like play at the biggest fucking tournament, or at least have a chance to play in the biggest tournament in the whole thing? You know, like it's wrong to complain about it, in my opinion. Yeah, the, I mean, the reason I don't give a fuck about any of the criticism of the SI Open qualifiers, other than the fact that it's not been allowed to be community casted, which is bullshit, um, but the reason I don't give a fuck about it is because nobody cared before it started, right? Nobody cared that it was single limb best of threes. You know, Gamma weren't going in saying, oh, I'd love to be playing this as double elimination. There was a lot of concerns raised about the UL beforehand, about it being best of ones, about it being draws, etc. You know, upon the the release of that format, a lot of people had views. But when the SI Open Quals was finally released and the details were finally released, all the teams were just like, yeah, right, let's go. Nobody said, oh, this is shit because it's single limb. And then a team that's expected to get through the bracket loses. And then everyone's like, oh, this is shit because it's single limb. I don't know. I just think... Okay, know, okay. The... like, if it wasn't single limb, the qualifiers would go on for like two weeks. Mm. And who the fuck's got time for that? Like it's Christmas yeah. soon. If, like if there's a best of one Swiss, somebody would have had a problem. That <laughs> yeah, of ones. course they would. Like because <laughs> it doesn't really matter what format they choose. There'd be a problem with it somewhere along the lines. When you're trying to have an open qualifier that has no cap on how many teams can enter. Yeah, there could like, be 500 teams in fact. Yeah, exactly. So what are they going to do? Double elimination? We're going to play like 200 games or some shit? Like extra? <laughs> like no, of course they're not. Be a fucking nightmare. I mean, Rano, can you give a bit of context to what the fuck Corey's saying in chat? Uh, he's just talking like about me. I'm living in Poland right now, and I'm originally I'm from Hamburg. 
And I'm at the moment, I'm just debating whether to stay in Poland for good or just like to move back to Germany and stuff. That's just like a lot of personal stuff going on with like where to buy a house and stuff. So. I mean, Corey has asked, you know, who is your idol and why is it him? Oh my gosh. I mean, to be fair though, like to be honest, I, I joke a lot with Corey and stuff, but he was one of the first guys, especially from the pro scene, to like really talk to me. And who, like, I think he recommended me as well to the Orcus guys back in the day. So, like, I owe him a lot. <laughs> mm. But yeah, he's he's still a little. Corey was, I think, <laughs> one of the first. I think when the one of the first events I did was Valencia, and Corey was one of the guys I was, I was obviously casting there. And I think he'd gone through the rough kind of patch where I'd been air quotes dropped a couple of times or a couple of change rounds in teams, relegation, so on and so forth with the old Navi lineup. I remember saying on a broadcast something like. Does he want to get dropped for the third time this year when he team killed someone or something on cast? And I don't think he heard it. Because on Reddit, we were having a right, right little conversation, being really nice to each other. And I think I told him about three months ago. I said this about you on stream, by the way. And he was like, what the fuck, man? And I was just like, yeah, sorry, mate. But Corey, uh, I, I, just to kind of go on a side point there, I do love him, bless him. Um, he blocked me a few weeks ago as well, which is another thing that he just wanted to do, yeah. I guess. It's a Corey thing. Stupid stuff on Twitter, yeah. Uh, he's, he's a bit of a <laughs> unique person, I'd say, but yeah. He's good fun. He's definitely good fun. Um, I don't okay. think I've ever listened to podcasts. No. I'm just here because Prano is nice. After you abused him so aggressively not too long ago. Shut up, Corey. Win relegations, then talk to me, you little twat. That can, go on, <laughs> that can go on all the podcast platforms now where there isn't video or there isn't Twitch chat, so you can actually hear what has been said in chat by Prano to Corey. What a toxic I guy. Say that. I would never say that. Yeah, absolutely not. Uh, let's do a bit of Q&A then as well, because I know we've had a couple of questions come in. Uh, Fresh, this is normally where you then take ownership and get the chance to ask a few questions, so far away. And yes, you're because <laughs> Fresh's cut looks like Desi's brows. Yeah, I think we had this question last time. Is there more hair on your head or my eyebrows right now? Probably my head, because uh, probably our eyebrows, because I shaved my head about an hour ago. I reckon if you looked down at the camera enough, like angled yourself down enough, you'd actually look like a rock on the ground. Look at that look. You are you are a boulder. <laughs> look at you. <laughs> you look like a gobstopper that gobstopper that's been sucked on a bit too much. <laughs> Fucking hell, <Aldous. laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Go on then, mate. Q and A. This is your segment, mate. Go for it. Uh, you do know that I didn't have anything prepared for this. Um, I mean, there were a couple in the Discord that got asked, and they yeah, always yeah, get priority, so we'll oh, start yeah. there. Two of them are NDA, um, so we're not doing them like. Where? Uh, maybe one of them is. Yeah, one of them is. Don't. Don't you know which one? You'll see it if uh, you're no, if um, you're not blind or stupid. You'll see it and right. then not ask it. <laughs> oh, what you're looking you're looking at the one from last week, right? Yeah, that's ages back. I'm talking about the ones from today here, from Yosh and from Rapnot. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Um, what was the most significant change in? Oh my god, Yosh, can you ask a better question next time? Um. What was the most significant change in Prano's um, opinion? Like from tier one, uh, tier three to tier one, what's the most significant change? Ah, I think team play and communication, I'd say, is the biggest change. I mean, people in tier three can shoot. Well, we already talked about that. But yeah. Communicating and playing as a team is what makes a tier one team a tier mm. one team. And we did already kind oh. of ask the next question around this, around yeah, um, yeah, yeah. German to English comm, so that's already gone through as well. Um, there was something yeah. that you raised to me. I'm not going to quote it word for word because I don't know if you want it said on stream. But players trash talking your style. <laughs> want to elaborate on that a little bit? Some players that like talking a bit of smack, apparently. I mean, I, I already said like I, I know I'm I'm aware of like people talking about my playstyle and like Fresh already gave his opinion on why that perception is there in the first place. But uh, I like people like talking about my playstyle, uh, trash talking my playstyle. And then dropping minus 30 and just dropping out of your league. So, uh, in my opinion, they should focus Leave on him alone. First. I already killed him, all right? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, at, I mean, at this I point, there's people... only one team that's dropped out of your league, Brand. <laughs> it's not like you. I mean, <laughs> it, there's a lot of players. Like, I, I think people should focus on themselves first and then talk about my play. So, that's all there I is... got to say. There. There's a lot of shit talking in the scene, to be fair, between players and stuff. It's like a high school club. It's ridiculous. I mean, everyone is like 20 to 25, and you wonder why there's a lot of shit talking, mate. Yeah, Being paid money to play video games, egos enlarge the size of a hot air balloon, and no one ever shuts the fuck up. It just seems to be the way the pro player. I think, I think they just all get tilted when they look at you, Des, and then they just immediately start bitching about other people. <laughs> what has that got anything to do with it? 
I just is. I've got to be that fucking one. careful, mate. We'll get Avatar Ang to go and sort them out if they carry on. You sort us out when you're fresh. <laughs> no, but I think I think fresh, like like mentioned it as well. Like people just get tilted about dying and then start blaming other things rather than uh, themselves for like me watching a flank or whatever. Even if I'm like two minutes into the round as Sophia and people expect to like Sophia to rush side at the beginning and like get yeah. seven kills and shoot 90 heads and whatever and i'm just not like that because i'm i'm taking a room and then i'm holding flank and waiting for my team to do stuff uh and then they die to it um i think they just get tilted about it and they look for excuses and i mean i understand um i'm, I'm getting tilted as well and i'm trash talking other people as well Part uh, of the fun. during scrims or whatever but i'm not i'm not like complaining <sighs> that much about other people's play styles when i'm when i'm playing bad myself I might yeah, be wrong. I, I might be wrong on this. Was it you who killed someone through some real bullshit angle? Was it a drone no, hole or something? No, that's Pack. That, that's pack. Was it Pack Bull? Is right. It Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. I know it was someone on Secret. I can't remember who it was. I remember that. Yeah, drone holes are like Pack Bull's second home. I reckon. <laughs> well, he's <laughs> a rat, mate. That's it. Getting through the holes. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. yeah. Come on, Fresh. What were you going to say, mate? Can't remember, mate. <laughs> it's gone. My memory is about as good as my hairline, mate. Can't remember. <laughs> it doesn't last very long <laughs> either way you look at it okay well we have completely blown open our whole 60 minute uh, aim as we always do tend to we're about that 90 minute mark so as we start closing things up is there anything that you want to talk about or anything you want to address Prano uh, I think I talked about stuff there I wanted to address especially the first talking about my play style I, I'm, I'm aware that it will happen still you've, you've, so had, your, uh, person, about, you've had your personal you've had your personal fanboy I've been in chat the whole time going hook the whole way through <laughs> I'll pronounce that again, please. <laughs> I have no idea how it's said, mate. I'm not even going to try. Yeah. It's called. I, I, I always read it as hook. Yeah, that's why I always read it as a lot. I don't know. It's just the way I've always read the word. Uh, it's it's, oh it's hook. like yeah. pronounced hook. 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 Okay, got it. <laughs> we're not German, are we, does? Huh? We're not German. No, nah, we're not, mate. We, we can't, can't read, we can't can't read these we're fucking not. words. <laughs> All right, digging back up the past that we don't need to go yeah, into. Yeah, one, one last well, quick thing then go. before we one last thing before we before we close out. Just if there's anyone in chat who has any questions, we can quickly go over those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure I, Hive's I think, got something stupid to ask. If, if there's any questions, does. I'll just quickly go back to the playstyle thing. Is like I think, and I guess this is a thing for a lot of players. Um, tier three right the way through to tier one. If you're looking for kind of excuses in the way that other teams play, you know, people will play a monkey team in scrims and they'll get banged by a monkey team that's like an underage monkey team and they will hit it. But then people don't look at what their issue is with themselves and try and improve. They'll look for issues in formats, other teams, play styles, that type of shit, right? Um, and yeah, that's, that's a big thing. And I think that's why, you know, some players um may have kind of shit talked prana or have opinions on prana because i imagine it is fucking frustrating you know like as is said he's flanking bottom floor villa prana's probably just sat up a bullet hole in the fucking wine cellar in the basement of villa and killed him um yeah <laughs> and you got you it's definitely got distracted by the laugh there in the chat that kicked off as a result <laughs> yeah but I I, you are you are right as well real quick uh i mean just to add to that um i've been playing ranked lately a little bit and I played some other UD uh, guys as well in, in the opponent team. And then I was on defense on cafe and I jumped out the window. And then I got trash talk for jumping out a window because I just wanted to play like an attack and wanted to stay outside the building. So it doesn't matter what you do. It's basically wrong every single time. So, I mean, it is what it is. People are always going to moan about it. Go on then. Why did you pick up a mat? Oh my gosh, that's the biggest regret I have in my career. Oh yeah, one of those ones. <laughs> Do you know he comes to he comes to me and Des every two weeks. He's like, I think I'm gonna get kicked. Prano's had a go at me again. I do get mad a lot. So I mean, not a lot, but I I get mad and especially on a murder because he's talking a lot. So he's he's receiving a lot of the heat. Uh, <laughs> But he's hanging in there. He's taking it pretty far, uh, pretty good is, so far. Is is a Mert the bad guy? Is he the one who has to kind of be a bit hard on you guys? Tough uh, lovers, they uh, say. Okay, okay. So Lazo is like the mum that will have to be like, "Oh, it's okay, boys. Yeah, we'll do this differently, or whatever." And then I'm kind of a bit more, I'm a little bit more the bad guy sometimes. But like, I don't like shout or fuck around or anything like that. It's fine. What I do you think, Prano? Kind of, uh... I mean, true. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I mean, I would say I'm I'm more of the bad guy in the team. I'd say because I'm. I'm pretty open about when stuff is not working, so I would say I'm the I'm the one who's 
talking a lot of uh, trash to other people than like i'm the first guy to talk trash to my teammates but i'm also the first guy to defend my teammates when other people are talking trash so yeah uh you're one of those kind of guys yeah you like it's no they're my people to abuse you're not allowed to do it. it's only me that yeah, can do that yeah. to them right <laughs> basically yeah <laughs> to, well to be fair like i like i think our like team dynamic right now is like pretty good but um, there was like, there's only ever one time where I like had to get like pissy or whatever after a scrim, and it was actually, uh, I'm sure you remember it. It was like the consulate scrim we played not not long ago. It was against Audacity Esports. That one was the only time where like I think that we ever like had a like as a team got like dis like disappointed with each other. And the only reason I bring it up is because Zoomy's in the chat. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was the most wobbly, wobbly scrim. Was. Uh... Oh, I can't probably say that. Doesn't matter. <laughs> He's trying to be careful. Um, yeah. Hive was just saying, and this actually really made me laugh when I just read it a second ago because I do this to you, pet, all the fucking time, and you fuckers always do mm -hmm. it. A murder is fine until you hear this might sound stupid, is what Hive has said, and this I imagine is that is, yeah. is that this because is you've worst. got an idea that they think is ridiculous in the same way that yes, I say yes, things to yes, you yes, two, yes, and yeah, you yeah, both yeah, lose no, your rag. Exactly like, are you own. actually stupid? Yeah, okay, so, like, so it's exactly this, but I will say sometimes, like, my stupid things I suggest work, but you can, it's like, you never, you never accept it, right? <laughs> and then you have the same idea, like, three days later, and you go, I have this idea, couldn't we do this? I'm like, you Mate. fucks, like, I literally <laughs> said that same thing three weeks ago. I just want to say, every time I'm <laughs> issuing the phrase, I, this might, uh, this might sound a little bit stupid, but... You just can turn off. Everyone just phone. groans. You just You're like, no, you go, no. You shut up. The stupidest idea is like on Clubhouse, placing a mirror window oh, that into one too, yeah. blue from church, like on the right side wall and stuff. Someone like, did this why? in my rank game the other day and everyone went fucking mental at it as well. <laughs> I, I was like, why, why would you even do that? And it's like having the stupidest ideas, but he's, he's right. Sometimes like one out of a hundred, there's an idea that could actually work. But then again, like there are so many stupid ideas that you don't even want to listen to it, so you just ignore the one good idea. <laughs> you, you, you got you got to take the good with the bad, right? I mean, the execute yeah. we did versus BDS was one of my stupid ideas. To be fair, yeah, that was I think bad. that was really good actually. So it's one of them. There's a few things like that that, that I've done that are like kind of good. And but to be fair, what, what, what Steph said in terms of like he can come up with a really good idea, and this is the same with the teams that I've been in. You can come up with a really good idea, and everyone will think it's shit, and then you kind of. It, the players, you plant the seed in the player's head. Three days later, they'll come back with basically the same idea and think they're like, it was an amazing idea they thought of in the shower or whatever. And you're just like, yep, yeah, yeah, we'll go with it because you uh, you think it's your idea. Kind of ego ego management, that coach. sounds like. Yeah. But to be yeah. fair, I think we just want to win the games. I'm not really bothered who comes up with the ideas. Yeah. I'm not, I'm like I would say like probably the least like ego person about that. I'm the kind of guy that if we won the invitation, I probably wouldn't even like hold the trophy. You know, like I don't really. I'm not that kind of guy. I would rather like, <laughs> win as a team. Prano's you know? exposing you there and saying, "Yeah, bollocks with his eyes there." No, <laughs> I think I think actually he would kind of agree with me. To be honest, I don't really like. I, I don't take credit for like anything that we do. Like okay. it's very rare that I ever do. Would you say, Prano? Yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing, 100%. <laughs> you motherfucker. Sure thing, sure thing, he says. Okay, cool. Let's start round this up then. Anything you want to say, Prano? Any plugs that you want to do? Like, anything you'd like to say, basically? Uh, I'm just uh, happy everybody was like a part of this podcast. Thank you for having me, boys. Uh, that's all i got to say, basically. Thank you. Mm more than welcome what about your guys because now you've had a bit of a dump yourself there fresh as well of uh, an unloading of all the drama with chaos feel good to get it off your chest yeah i mean i'm halfway there mate um obviously there's a lot that i can't talk about um won't talk about i don't want to like it, it's a lot in the past you know the mm. the orgs obviously kind of dropped them um i know they're still with chaos until they find a new org but they've basically been dropped um and with enough tired that roster potentially might look a lot different and there's no point bringing it all back up now it's gone. Um, but it was good to get a lot off the chest, yeah. Good. Anything from your side of murder as well? No, you've been a bit attacked in chat by Hyph and attacked on the podcast ah, by Prano it's today. Good. It's just like being at work. There's my one day off away from these motherfuckers and I got both of them in here. It's Can't escape. It, it is what it is. You chose this life, mate. You've signed yourself up to it. But guys, thank you very much for joining in. Uh, again, we'll be back with another episode probably in a couple of weeks' time. I say a couple of weeks. That will be Boxing Day, so there'll be a little bit of a change in schedule. Um, but I'm looking to do something potentially with the guys on Kavana and Eminem ahead of both their uh, games for at the finals for EU. And also, of course, it'll be after the quals to see how they're both done there as well, where I expect they're going to play each other. So, yes.
I mean, if any of if any of them beat us, then we'll just blacklist them from the podcast, and then they're not allowed. But it'll yeah, just yeah, be. Yeah. I'm sure Nathan shitting himself. So. <laughs> An hour and a half of bragging. It would be incredible. Uh, what I, we... I'm just. I just wondering real quick. Uh, who do you guys think will win? Like between Eminem and Kavana? Uh, I'm going to say Eminem, and the reason for that is I always back against Kavana, and then Kavana win. So I'm going to say Eminem. Okay, I was going. Then... I'm going to say Kavana. I think, and I. I'd... It's really hard because I think they're so close, but I think Kavana have always kind of been the dark horse. They've always been kind of under the foot of Eminem and thinking, like, Eminem are the golden child. Like, everyone adores them and loves them, and Kavana are kind of, they're not so much the bad guys, but the outcasts. And I think, like, from speaking to Gorgona a lot, speaking to Sloth a lot, speaking to Kayak a lot, like, I do really like the team, and I do really hope they do well. Um, it's going to be a really close game. I really can't call it particularly strongly either way, to be honest. Either way, from, I mean, like, um, my my perception, probably the same with you, Des, um, a little bit from the UK. We don't really care which one wins, because the other one will go and beat Broke, and yeah. then we'll have both of them in EUL anyway. That's what I wanted to ask. Do you think the other <laughs> team will win against Broke? Uh, no. I think Broke no. have been given an absolute gift by the relegations being delayed um, for no apparent reason. Um, the relegations got delayed, and Broke therefore have a lot more time to fix their problems, and they will probably beat whichever team is the um... point. Yeah, I, I somewhat agree with that. I think Kavana beat Eminem, by the way. Uh, I just think they play really good Siege. They have a good mentality. They play really good as a team. And uh, yeah, also because I shit talked Grizzly and Anarchic, so they obviously will win. That's just the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I will say on the on the, that topic, uh, in recent scrims we played against them, they both looked actually really good. I'd say Grizzly actually is a player who I 100% underestimate. Now I've seen more from him. An anarchic. I mean, he's doing a lot of IGL work and stuff. I think so. It's hard to judge him. All it comes down to sometimes the small bits. But yeah, I've already done that outro, so we will wrap things up there. Thank you for joining in, everyone, and we will see you next time. Peace out. Uh, see you soon. See you later.